Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Organic Chemistry Some Basic Principles and Techniques. Let us now classify organic compounds. So in this video we are going to start the topic that is classification of organic compounds. And after having learned the different classes of organic compounds we would be proceeding to uh, naming them that is their nomenclature. And even before we go on to the nomenclature, we talk, we'll be talking about the uh, functional groups and homologous series. That will be the next video, but right now let us understand how do we classify organic compounds. Organic compounds can be classified into two main categories. The first category is open chain hydrocarbons and the second is closed chain hydrocarbons or Acyclic, that is not in the form of a cyclic, an open chain is also known as an acyclic hydrocarbon and closed chain are known as cyclic hydrocarbons or alicyclic hydrocarbons. Now imagine, this is a chain, alright, a metallic chain and it has got open ends, so it is an open chain, right? If I join one end to the other end and I fix them together, this now has become a closed chain. It is now a closed chain and if you look at it, I'm just making it smaller so it becomes, it, it is more like a ring, right? It, it is more like a ring. So it turns into a ringed structure. So we say it is cyclic or it is a closed chain. So when you have hydrocarbons which have ends, carbons on ends and you can see ends that are dangling out that forms uh, an open chain hydrocarbon. That is, you can see the ends of the chain. But if you cannot see the ends, and the end and the tip seem to be merged as in this ring, or in this closed chain, we call it a closed chain or an alicyclic hydrocarbon. So, organic compounds can be classified into two categories, acyclic or open chain, and anicyclic, that is closed chain. Acyclic or open chain hydrocarbons, here are some examples. Ethane, ethane has two carbon atoms, CH3, CH3, and it is both the carbons are forming the ends of the chain, and the chain consists of only two carbon atoms. It is a molecule which is like this, two carbon atoms. Then you have isobutane. In isobutane, you have three carbon atoms in a chain and the second carbon has a methyl group attached to it. So it is two methyl propane which of course when we do the nomenclature you will be able to understand that. So this is a chain of three carbon atoms with a branch. Again you can see open carbon atoms, open ends of the chain. Whenever you have a carbon on the end of a chain it usually has three hydrogens attached to it because carbon is tetravalent and it is forming one bond with the other carbon and three the other three valencies are satisfied with the help of hydrogens and this is known as the methyl group so usually on the end of a chain you will see a methyl group if it is if it has carbon on it so this is isobutane this compound is again an open chain hydrocarbon because you see an open carbon here an open carbon here and it is known as acetaldehyde and you have CH3 and to the this carbon you have attached an oxygen and a hydrogen and this CHO group is the aldehydic group. Uh, we'll be doing the, homolog uh, the functional groups in the next video. Although from your class 10 I'm sure you remember a little bit about uh, that. Then you have acetic acid. The COOH group forms the acid group, the carboxylic acid group. And in CH3COOH, again, you see open ends. This carbon has an open end. It, this is an open end. The CH3 is an open end. So whenever you have open ends to any molecule, that forms an acyclic or an open chain hydrocarbon. It may be a simple hydrocarbon, alkane, alkene, alkyne, <coughs> consisting of only carbon and hydrogens or it may be uh, a compound which has other functional groups but you can see the ends of a chain. And the second category would be of cyclic or closed chain carbon compounds or these are also known as alicyclic hydrocarbons. When the chain is closed it forms a ring-like structure then you get these uh, alicyclic hydrocarbons. 
Now the alicyclic hydrocarbon can be homocyclic or it can be heterocyclic. Homo means similar. It means the chain or the ring is made up of similar groups that is CH2, CH2, CH2. It is made up of only carbon atoms then it is homocyclic. But if in the ring you have an atom other than carbon then it is a heterocyclic uh, ring hetero it is an and that atom that element the atom of another element would be known as a hetero atom and such compounds cyclic compounds are known as heterocyclic compounds or hydrocarbons so now what do we understand in the classification, you have open chain hydrocarbons, you have closed chain hydrocarbons. The closed chain hydrocarbons are further categorized into two types, that is homocyclic and heterocyclic. In homocyclic, you have all rings made up of only carbon atoms, and in heterocyclic, you have the ring in which and one of the members or one of the uh, members of the ring is not carbon it is some other element and that atom is a heteroatom and therefore it is known as the heterocyclic compound. For example, in homocyclic uh, alicyclic hydrocarbons, this has got, this triangle shows you three corners. It means it has three carbon atoms. So it is cyclopropane. This uh, structure is a pentagon. It has five corners. Do you see? One, two, three, four, five. So it means it has five carbon atoms. So it is a cyclopentane molecule. This has six. So it is a cyclohexane. This has a, this is unsaturated. It has a double bond. So it is an alkene. But how many carbon atoms are there? Six. Therefore, it is, it is cyclohexene it, because it has a double bond here. And in heterocycle, cyclic hydrocarbons there's one example that is given here that is tetrahydrofuran in which there are five atoms in the ring out of which four are carbons and one is oxygen now in the cyclic hydrocarbons there is another variation that is seen that is some of the cyclic hydrocarbons they have special properties and they have what uh, what is it about these cyclic hydrocarbons some cyclic hydrocarbons which are of course cyclic and they are planar molecules that is in they come in two dimensions they are not three dimensional structures as um, as you would have uh, uh, like methane which has a tetrahedral form these have got a planar structure to them they are basically in a plane and they are cyclic and they have alternate double bonds or the possibility of electrons that can be delocalized that is electrons that can jump from one hydrogen to the uh, one carbon to the other and since electrons are free to move around this uh, this combination makes the uh, compounds that are formed uh, special in their categories a lot of properties depend on uh, on on this fact that the electrons can jump around in the ring and in the ring the ring is a planar compound and it has electrons which can jump around such hydrocarbons are known as aromatic hydrocarbons and therefore since they are so special and so widely used they are uh, studied as a separate uh, as a separate class of compounds which is aromatic hydrocarbons and what causes aromaticity that the compound should be should be alicyclic it should be a cyclic structure and it should be planar and if it is you know how how would you see a cycle a bangle do you see it's cyclic it is planar it's you will not see shoots coming out in three dimensions it is just a simple uh, cycle it's not like a sphere it's like a circle it's like a ring so it is you have it's a cyclic structure it has got alternating double bonds and these since it has alternating double bonds these electrons of the second bond the pi electrons they are free to move around which causes them to turn aromatic now aromatic hydrocarbons are further classified into two categories again the first is homocyclic and the other is heterocyclic in homocyclic also you have two types you know, uh, this is really interesting. The first is the benzenoid, that is the, hydro, uh, the hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons which have benzene rings in them and non-benzenoid. The first aromatic hydrocarbon which was identified and aromaticity was understood. The structure of 
this molecule benzene was discovered by a scientist called Kekule. Kekule now knew, you know, how to, uh, what the bonding was like, but he did not, how many carbons does it have? How many hydrogens does it have? It has three, car uh, six carbons, six hydrogens. Uh, but he could not really imagine what would the structure of benzene be like. And when he was sleeping one day, he was tired of making all the bonds and finding where which electron goes. How would the structure be formed? And then one day, when Kekule grew tired, he just went off to sleep. And when he slept, he had a dream. And in the dream, he saw that a snake is moving around. And the snake puts his tail in his mouth. It is the same thing, you know, when I was doing this, I can never forget Kekule. He imagined the snake putting his tail in his mouth, resulting in the formation of a ring. Kekule got up and he immediately joined the first carbon and the last carbon with a bond in the six carbons that benzene had. And now he tried to put the hydrogens and the double bonds and the electrons and he found the perfect structure for benzene. And once he found the structure of benzene, you know, it was such a wonderful moment. It was a breakthrough and he knew that this means that these hydrocarbons can be cyclic and they can be, they, they are aromatic. So over time, other benzenoid um, aromatic hydrocarbons were discovered. So all those hydrocarbons which have got a single benzene ring or more than one benzene ring, a cluster of benzene rings, all those who have benzene ring are studied as benzenoid aromatic hydrocarbons. And those which do not have benzene are non-benzenoid aromatic hydrocarbons. An example of non-benzenoid hydrocarbon is tropolone. Do you see here how many in benzene there are six carbons so you get this hexagon. In aniline the benzene ring is there but to benzene ring one of the carbons to one of the carbons instead of hydrogen you have an NH2 group attached to it and this compound is known as aniline and if you have two benzene rings fused together this molecule is known as naphthalene you know the naphthalene balls that you use in winters uh, to protect your uh, they are moth balls to protect your clothes in winters so or, or uh, when you pack up your clothes winter clothes you put the naphthalene balls to save them from uh, insects the non-benzenoid one, for example, tropolone, this does not have a benzene ring. If you see how many carbons does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Here there are seven carbons. One, one of, this is the seventh carbon and a double bond and oxygen. So this is not, this does not have a ring of six carbons with alternating double bonds. But it has an oxygen attached by a double bond. So if you really look, you do get alternating double bonds to make it an aromatic. What did we say? For an aromatic hydrocarbon, what should be there? There should be a, it should be a flat structure, it should be a planar structure, it should be a circular structure. This is planar, it is flat, it is uh, circular and it should have alternating double bonds. So although the alternating double bonds here you see alternating but here what we see is the double bond coming here. So if you really see the alternating double bonds, one double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. So the alternation comes from this side. Therefore, it is aromatic. It is, uh, since it is, it does not have a benzene ring, it is non-benzenoid. And when, but you see, in the ring, you have only carbon atoms. This oxygen is attached to the seventh carbon. On the other hand, in heterocyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, there is one non-carbon atom. Again, just like we had heterocyclic, uh, sorry, yeah, heterocyclic, um, alicyclic hydrocarbons, which were not aromatic. One of the atoms here was oxygen, which was not carbon. The same thing in heterocyclic hydrocarbons, if you have one of the atoms which is not carbon, but the molecule is still aromatic, which means that the molecule is still planar, the molecule still has alternating double bonds, it can still allow the delocalization of electrons, then the mo molecule will not only be heterocyclic, it will also be aromatic. So aromatic hydrocarbons can be both homocyclic and heterocyclic. 
In the homocyclic, you can call them benzenoid and non-benzenoid. And in heterocyclic, in heterocyclic, of course, again, in heterocyclic, you will not have the benzenoid hydrocarbons. This would be, they would all be non-benzenoid if you really look at it. Uh, they, uh, because benzene ring itself means that there should be six carbons in the ring. And the ring should be made up of six carbons. So heterocyclic in that cycle, the cycle may consist of six carbons or whatever number of carbons, doesn't matter. In, in the ring itself, there should be one atom which is not carbon. That makes it a heterocyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. Examples are furan. In furan, you see, you have these five um, atoms. Four are carbons and one is oxygen. Again, if you have sulfur in, in the uh, pentadin, then uh, if one of the atoms is sulfur, then it is known as thiophene. And here, it looks very much like benzene, but one of the atoms instead of carbon is nitrogen. And this compound is known as pyridine. So these are heterocyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So with this you understand how do we classify organic compounds. And with this I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.